Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon or good evening. Whatever part of the world that you're in. We've been discussing Christ's cross of a new covenant. We've looked at repentance and disobedience against God warrants punishment, divine punishment. Suffering for the sake of Christ's righteousness, God's heart and will is next. So let's just bow our heads and pray that the power of God's Holy Spirit will both will speak to both you and me. O oh, gracious God and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for your love and your compassion and your mercy. We thank you for your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we also thank you and praise you for the gift of the Holy Spirit, for his life, his crucifixion and resurrection, to deliver us who believe in you and your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. who delivered us from sin through his death. So help us, Lord God, and even those who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. Pray we speak to them also about matters that are eternal. And nobody knows how long they have on this earth. We ask this in the precious name of your Son, our Saviour and Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah, we are looking at the next subtitle, if you like, Suffering for the Sake of Christ's Righteousness. It is an inescapable fact that all suffering is evil. An evil that the saints of God have to overcome. We all need to go through this. Because it is inherent to this world's age. However, both evangelists, Matthew and Mark, view this in their accounts of the gospel as a road to immense blessings. Of course, suffering and evil are unattractive, but they are part and partial of this age. Jesus our Lord spoke upon this serious matter. Matthew chapter 5 verses 11 and 12 Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets before you. When suffering comes upon us, the immediate reaction is to turn upon the source who inflicts the suffering upon us. From whatever source it comes from. I know it is incredibly difficult and hard to turn the source of evil and suffering into good. But with the help of the Spirit of Christ, it can be done. Suffering is inevitable. It is something which inflicts itself upon humanity. 
And when it befalls the people of God, they can, they can accept it with the help of God, the Holy Spirit. And by these means, bring fruit to our Lord Jesus Christ. Furthermore, tribulation will rise against us because we are the disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. Discipleship is what the elect of God have been called for. Not just another add-on to the Christian faith. Yet many seek an easier path and rather not talk about it. Jesus more often than not called upon those who would want to follow him to a life of renunciation and live his life through them, with the help of God the Holy Spirit. You'll notice the emphasis and the stress I put on God the Holy Spirit. Because you can do nothing without being obedient and submitting yourself to God the Holy Spirit. And listen to what the Lord Jesus Christ wants you to do. Through him and God the Father. Because the Holy Spirit only brings what they want us to know and do. Matthew chapter 10 verse 38. And he, he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Mark chapter 8 and verse 34. When he called the people to himself, with his disciples also, he said to them, Whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Discipleship and suffering is the very essence of those who are genuine in their faith towards our risen, glorified Lord. Our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Only He knows who they are. Suffering is the pathway to glory for the believer, as well as a disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because He in His own suffering has transformed it into such. The two evangelists, Matthew and Mark, recording the accounts of the gospel of Jesus Christ our Lord, what he had to say in regard to suffering for the sake of the kingdom of God. But in them they have Meaningful, meaningful power. Meaningful power to be able to save the sinner. Of course, they are a product of evil men. There is no doubt concerning that. Moreover, it is actually the means whereby God makes the choice to bless humanity. It has also got to be said that through our very own sufferings lies the root to our salvation. The sufferings of the suffering servant, the Son of God, Jesus Christ himself. laid the very foundation stone of our salvation. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, both God and man, our risen glorified Lord, has 
has through his own sufferings as God and man, while on earth, went voluntarily to the cross after being almost flogged to death, was horrendously nailed to that cross under excruciating pain and agony left to die, which he did on our behalf, and by so doing has consecrated suffering as a means of blessing for his disciples. And others watching on. It may not be palatable, but it is the course of life for his dedicated disciples. There is that somber and poignant idea that when we suffer for the sake of Christ, our Lord, we share in his sufferings that he himself suffered on her in his very public ministry. Mark writes of this in his narrative of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mark chapter 10, verse 38 and following. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you ask. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink and be baptised with the baptism that I am baptised? That I am baptised with? They said to him, We are, or we are able. So Jesus said to them, You will indeed drink the cup that I drink, and be baptised with the baptism that I am baptised with. But to sit at my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it is for those, it is for those for whom it is prepared. We who love and are known to our risen, glorified Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ can in some way share in his sufferings by following him as his true disciples. I'll just repeat that and just think about it, ponder over it and think and meditate on it. We who love and are known to our risen, glorified Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, can in some way share in his sufferings by following him as his true disciples. Our next title, subtitle, if you like subtitles that is, our next title is God's Heart and Will. God's heart and will. The idea that some New Testament scholars and theologians have expressed that to appease God's anger he had to find a substitute to vent his feelings upon is not totally accurate in the light of Scripture.
It is a one-sided view of the atonement depicted by his son, Jesus Christ, who came to earth and took the brunt of our sins upon himself. Because of his love towards the Father and us, to appease an angry God is not the full truth. Far from it. We need to see that it is because of him, the Father's love towards us, the idea of atonement springs up from his heart. The only method from his divine initiative to save men from the wrath to come is centred in his love towards them. We will find from the two evangelists, Matthew and Mark, in the narratives of their, of their accounts of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, the theme of God our Father's love towards us. There is a passion of Jesus Christ our Lord when he quite openly blames his betrayal on the man who betrayed him. He is guilty of the charges against him. Matthew chapter 26 and verse 24. The Son of Man indeed goes just as it is, just as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of God is betrayed. It would have been good for that man if he had not been born. The scriptures prophesied of this event of the atonement and Christ the Son of God being the only person who could bring it to fruition. The thread of the Father's love towards mankind can be clearly seen. Matthew chapter 26 and verse 54. How then could the scriptures be fulfilled that it must happen thus? Jesus Christ our Lord knew in himself God his Father loved him, and he in himself loved the Father, knowing that the way of the cross was the only method possible to save mankind from their sins. And the Father's love is behind it, in the only way he could rescue men from their sins. Matthew 25, Matthew chapter 25 and verse 56. But all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. However, we can see from this the bigger picture of the love, of the love of God towards us in the person of his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, executing his will by fulfilling the prophetic word of the Old Testament. The love of the Father being made visible in him towards mankind. Moreover, we have to keep in mind that before eternity the Trinity had come 
to a loving agreement. Which is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That the Son in his foreknowledge would see he would be killed as a man to bring atonement to a fallen world. The Son of God voluntarily accepted this in order to show love, the love of God the Father and himself to a fallen world whereby he executed the will of God the Father for more for fallen mortals showing his immense love towards them. Mark cites this prophecy in his account of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The words actually coming from the tongue of our Lord. Mark chapter 14 verse 27 Then Jesus said to them Jesus said to them to all of them all of you will be made to stumble this night for it is written I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. What was said earlier concerning God the Father and God the Son in his foreknowledge before eternity is that Jesus knew Jesus knew that he had come to die. It was planned by him his Father and God the Holy Spirit. It had to be done to free mankind from the captivity of sin. The evangelist and author Matthew of the Gospel of Jesus Christ makes it abundantly clear when he wrote of what Jesus said to them. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 31. From that time, Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. Quite clearly, then he came on his own volition, submitting to the will of his Father in loving obedience to show the love of God his Father to the fallen world. He must do that because the plan of mercy and of love for the rescue of God the Father's people was being executed through him and by him through his crucifixion through his crucifixion upon the cross his blood free many from their sins God his Father resurrecting him in glory on the third day. The cross was necessary for the sins of the world. Mark chapter 8 verse 31. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and three and after three days 
rise again. John Mark, John Mark, the author of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, according to Mark, adds weight and supports Matthew's witness and testimony to what Jesus had said to them. Although John Mark was not there, he got his information from a reliable source. Paul the Apostle. The cross of Christ was inevitable. Matthew chapter 17, verses 22 to 23. Now while they were staying in Galilee, Jesus said to them, the Son of Man is about to be betrayed into the hands of men. And they will kill him. And the third day he will be raised up. And they were exceedingly sorrowful. Such was the degree of darkness and depravity that a man had allowed himself to fall into. That there was no human possibility of getting out of it. Something miraculous had to be done. Then God showed his divine, magnanimous love to the whole of the fallen world, which has no restrictions by sending his only beloved son, Jesus Christ, to earth to die on the cross that those who believe in him, accepting his lordship, his lordship over them, would be freed, would be freed from sin and enter eternal life with him. We therefore can conclude in this section, the concept of salvation and atonement was of God our Father, and God the Son, Jesus Christ, our risen, glorified Lord. Let us bow our hearts before the Father and the Son, our risen, glorified Lord, giving him our praise, our worship, our love, our gratitude, appreciation, and most of all, our lives. Now, Jesus Christ talks to me. I'm not exceptional or unique in that. But one thing that he brought with tremendous clarity that the Spirit has been speaking to my spirit Although preaching is important and teaching is important, most important of all, as you live your life, if you know Jesus Christ in the way he wants you to live your life, that you humble yourself, crucify self, and show the love of Christ to everyone and help them in whatever way possible you can help. Because we have a world here of sinners who know nothing of the love and the mercy and the goodness and compassion of our, of our Saviour and Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. We who have been saved have a responsibility to our salvation, to the Son of God who allowed himself to be crucified for us. So my prayer for you and my prayer for me 
is that we humbly get on our knees before him, submit our lives to him, listen to what he has to say through his spirit, and be obedient to him, and ask him to direct us to men and women and children who know nothing of his love, and ask his spirit to enable us and help us to show that love to a fallen world. Because it's not the Father's desire that any should perish. So I pray for you and for you and for me that we will be able to do that. So thank you for your time. And I pray that the Spirit of the Almighty God is speaking to you now. God bless.